Hello, everybody. It's great to see you all here uh, with us today. It's me, Jose, and on our weekly walk, we're actually going to be celebrating National Pollinator Week, which is, of course, dedicated to all the little bugs and critters and other animals that help maintain a good ecological balance all across the country. Now, um, for our walk for today, let's go ahead and actually get right into it. Now, uh, as you all know, all participants are muted, but you can use the chat feature to say hello and comment. If you have any questions, you can use the Q&A uh, feature and uh, my colleague Desiree is gonna be on the back end. Uh, she'll answer any questions that you folks might have. Uh, closed captioning has also been enabled as well. So you can turn them on by simply, or rather turn them off by simply pressing the live transcript button down at the bottom of the screen and then pressing hide subtitles. Uh, most of the images that you're gonna see today were taken by myself or they were taken from our official uh, Central Park Conservancy archives, but you also see a few other images from other sources as well. And those are gonna be listed uh, at the bottom of each uh, image. And of course, as we all know, uh, our official mission here at the Central Park Conservancy is to preserve and celebrate Central Park as a sanctuary from the pace and pressures of city life, enhancing the enjoyment and well-being of all. All righty. Pollinators, like insects, are of course essential for the survival of the ecosystem uh, around us. Uh, basically, by digging around a flower, looking for nectar and perhaps maybe other nutrients, uh, pollinators actually help spread pollen around, uh, allowing native plants especially to grow free and wild. So we're actually going to go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the plants here in the park and see what kinds of pollinators aid them on a daily basis. And we'll also discuss some of the challenges that these insects face uh, in a quickly developing world. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the map right over here. So we're gonna start off uh, from 6th Avenue and Central Park South, and then we're gonna head uh, north uh, through the winding pathways near the pond and Woolman Rink, and then we'll examine some of the native wildflowers and pollinators here in this area. Then we'll uh, end things off at the Bean Slope, where we'll explore the native meadow landscape there. And of course, we'll look for some of these uh, lovely insects, uh, bugs, and other types of pollinators. All righty, so let's start right here at the 6th Avenue uh, kiosk over at the southern end of the park. So we'll make our way down these steps to get to the uh, actual route itself. And as y'all can see, uh, the hydrangeas here in the park, uh, they're now out in full bloom, meaning that we're well on our way into uh, the heat of summer. Now, while these are, of course, uh, very popular uh, as ornamental plantings, really anywhere you go around uh, New York City, uh, today we're actually here to look at some of the native wild plants and flowers of the state of New York. So as we make our way further down, you can see, of course, some of the shoreline plantings of the pond ahead of us. Um, while the pond, of course, is a very uh, amazing and very beautiful uh, place, uh, uh, landscape, uh, we'll go ahead and save that for another weekly walk. Now, as we've seen in uh, previous walks, the pond, of course, is going to be occupied by a number of uh, different uh, birds and other types of waterfowl that you normally don't really see here in Manhattan, such as this uh, black crowned night heron, which, of course, prefers more uh, quiet waters. Now, if we keep heading north and examine some of the plants by the side of the pathways, we'll start to uh, encounter more native plant species. So this particular one is, of course, the common milkweed, and it's beloved by a number of different pollinators here on the East Coast. And we'll actually talk about the more uh, famous one uh, near the end of the tour. But as I was actually uh, examining the leaf of the uh, milkweed plant, I was actually lucky enough to witness these hoverflies mating. Now, hoverflies, like most of the uh, insects we'll examine today, are actually pretty important in the process of pollination. While they have these uh, black and yellow stripy bands that make them look like bees, uh, hoverflies are actually nothing to fear, and they can actually be uh, pretty harmless to humans. Uh, flies in general, I think, are actually amazing pollinators, and studies show that they can be actually just as effective as uh, you know, bees and other types of pollinators at spreading uh, pollen uh, around. And right down the path, you can see this uh, jump seed plant. And as we can see here, uh, this one really is starting to attract uh, quite a few insects already. Uh, one of them is uh, something called the red banded leaf hopper, which 
normally dwells in meadows and woodlands throughout uh, North America. Now, I know this image might be a little bit uh, hard to see since uh, this particular uh, bug really was uh, so tiny, but as you uh, all can see, it's got this very uh, colorful appearance and typically it can be identified by the uh, red and the light blue markings on its back. Um, so here's actually a much better image uh, where you can really see that blue pop. Uh, very true to its name, the leaf hopper can jump pretty uh, impressive distances for its size. So some can actually leap up to more than 40 times their own body length, uh, which of course pretty much makes them a uh, champion uh, jumpers, of course. All right, so let's continue on and uh, we're going to go ahead and pass right through the winding promenades of the park and we'll take a look at some of the uh, other bugs around here in the area. Uh, from here, we're going to continue through Gapstow Bridge and continue uh, heading north. Of course, uh, we can see the bridge pretty much right in front of us already. Now, right along the way, we're going to pass by this uh, plant called the mugwort. Uh, relaxing on its leaves, you can actually see this uh, little tiny larva of an Asian lady beetle, which is not actually native to the U.S. Basically, it was introduced uh, back in the 1960s and intentionally released by the Department of Agriculture in order to control aphid populations, which is a type of insect that does immense damage uh, to uh, crops and forests around the country. Okay. And uh, from here, we're gonna continue right on up these steps. Now, right on top of that, one of the plants that are growing from the uh, cracks of the large rocky outcrop, you can find this uh, fly. Now, it's not just any fly. This is called the long-legged fly. Uh, which is a native species that has been uh, you know, proven to be beneficial to the ecosystem. They have a metallic gold color and they're usually pretty small, but don't let that fool you since they can actually eat harmful pests like spider mites and aphids. Now, as pollinators, uh, the long-legged fly can actually feed on a wide variety of plants, uh, helping uh, native uh, plant species uh, thrive. Alrighty, and let's go ahead and continue on with the tour. And we pass by the dairy over on our left. And now we're gonna head straight towards our next stop. Now, before we actually go ahead and continue on with our walk, why don't we go ahead and conduct our poll of the day. So uh, today, since we're of course, we're uh, celebrating pollinator week, I actually wanted to uh, ask all of you, you have a favorite type of pollinator? Of course, I only listed just a few of the countless uh, many, many, many species of uh, uh, pollinators and other animals out there, including common animals like bees, butterflies, moths, uh, bats, hummingbirds. Now, if you have any other favorites, please do let us know in the chat section. All right, so it looks like uh, mostly everybody here has voted. So let's go ahead and end the poll and then share the results. All right, so it looks like actually, about 49% of you, uh, a little bit less than half, uh, like the butterflies uh, a little bit more. And um, I actually kind of agree with you here. Um, butterflies, especially the monarch butterflies, um, they truly are some of the most amazing, the most beautiful pollinators, uh, and some of the most famous ones that you'll see uh, here in the East Coast of the United States. But as we'll actually see today on our tour, butterflies are not actually as important uh, as a pollinator compared to other, uh, you know, insects like bees. We'll talk a little bit more about bees uh, later on in our walk. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, uh, you know, uh, continue on with our tour. So uh, from here, we're moving along and uh, right along one of the promenades as we uh, continue to the pathway, you can find this uh, nice little uh, nondescript trail heading into uh, what we call the Dean Slope. Now, on our previous weekly walks, uh, we've actually explored the Dean before in uh, various different seasons, like in winter, as well in, as in summer. But I don't think we've ever really properly focused on the insects and pollinators here. The Dean as uh, this uh, sign over on the uh, uh, you know, barricade on the left uh, says, uh, it's actually a native meadow um, that's packed with all sorts of plants and wildflowers that actually can be found right here uh, in the state of New York. So the Dean uh, Slope was actually created not too long ago, just within the past five or six years, really with the intent of showcasing the natural wonders of New York State's meadows. 
as such, it's going to attract a lot of uh, moths, bees, and all sorts of uh, other great uh, pollinators. So let's actually go ahead and uh, take a look at some of these uh, very important plants right now. So the first one that we see up on our left-hand side, this is called the foxglove beard tongue. Now, that's definitely a very interesting uh, name. Um, again, it's called foxglove beard tongue. Uh, it usually blooms late into uh, the spring uh, and into the early summer. Um, this late bloom time uh, compared to other plants in the spring means that it's actually got the very crucial role of providing nectar and food for pollinators uh, during the in-between seasons when there really aren't as many flowers from other plants. So beard tongue actually comes in many colors like pink, uh, there's red, there's blue, and uh, blue and white especially attract uh, quite a bit of uh, insects. Now, their pollinators primarily include bees of all species, including this bumblebee feasting on some nectar. Now, as I've uh, uh, previously hinted at before, more so than any other family of insects, bees really are some of the most important pollinators in the land. So there's actually more than 4,000 species alone here in the country. And many of them have the very important task of spreading pollen around for countless different species of plants, including everyday garden staples like apples, lettuce, grapes, blueberries, uh, pretty much uh, most of the um, you know, uh, produce that we see in the local grocery store, they do actually uh, depend uh, quite a bit on pollinators, uh, especially bees. Uh, without bees, we really wouldn't have, uh, you know, uh, all these vegetables uh, that, that we would have at the uh, grocery that, of course, we depend on to survive. And with their existence being threatened more and more every day, humans are now just starting to appreciate uh, bees as essential pollinators. So, Next time you see a bee, no matter how annoying they get, no matter how much they buzz around your face, your ears or something like that, please, please, please refrain from hurting them or harming them at all costs because they really are quite essential for the survival of many of these plants in our ecosystem. Alrighty, um, up ahead we have this uh, red clover. Now this of course is actually another plant that's very, very attractive to bees. Um, this is actually a perennial that's in the legume family. So it's gonna be related to beans. Uh, red clover flowers have this very interesting shape and they require actually uh, insects with very long tongues to pollinate them. Some bees like the uh, bumblebee and the honeybee, uh, they can actually get the job uh, done uh, because of their feeding habits. Uh, in fact, some growers of this particular uh, plant, the red clover, uh, they'll actually bring in honeybees to greatly increase the yield uh, from each seed. Now, right up ahead the pathway, uh, we will find this plant called the bottle brush grass. And for the fact that it, of course, resembles a bottle brush. Now, it's a type of grass that mammals like deer, uh, field mice, rabbits, and even dogs love to snack on. So if you have any uh, pets, uh, like uh, dogs or something like that, and uh, you're always uh, out and about in the uh, uh, native wildflower, meadow, or something like that, um, then you know that uh, you know, dogs really do love to a snack on these uh, quite a bit. So these are actually going to be native from the Midwest all the way down to the East Coast. These, of course, are actually uh, fairly common um, and they can be very, very tolerant of shade. Usually they're uh, going to be cross-pollinated by the wind. Um, so insects really don't play as much as a role uh, in their growth, but just like other animals, bugs love eating bottle brush leaves, including certain species of butterfly caterpillars uh, and moths. So uh, up ahead, we can see this common milkweed. So we actually saw the same plant just earlier on in the walk. Now, this time of year, the milkweed's flowers are actually just about to bloom. So you can see some of the flowers are pretty much ready to go. And of course, they're very well loved here in North America because they are the main source of food for the legendary monarch butterflies. Now, monarchs, of course, are so, so, so famous since they migrate every year to spend uh, the winters in a very, very specific a part of uh, southwestern Mexico. It's a very long journey, but one that many of us here in the United States uh, look forward to uh, when they actually pass uh, through our area. And of course, they make a scene all over the place. Uh, the caterpillars uh, of monarch butterflies, they eat only milkweed, since this plant provides pretty much everything that the young insects need to transform into the very beautiful adult butterflies that are so famous. But however, all across the country, uh, the common milkweed 
uh, has been rapidly disappearing, mostly because of overdevelopment and the usage of harmful weed killers and pesticides, threatening the very existence of these butterflies. Now, one of the main goals of Pollinator Week is to bring to attention the increasing uh, disappearance of uh, the habitats of pollinators, affecting not just these insects and plants, but also humans as a species, because of course, we're still very much a part of our natural ecosystem. Okay, so moving on to the pathways of the Dean Slope. And just up ahead, uh, you can find the leaves of a uh, Southern Magnolia tree right in the middle of the meadow. Now, while it's not exactly native to New York, the Southern Magnolia still puts on quite a show in spring uh, when it's large uh, white flowers are gonna be in bloom. Now, as anyone familiar with magnolias know, uh, their leaves can be really quite uh, thick and glossy, and they're of course present year round, uh, basically making them uh, an evergreen tree. Uh, the reason it's got such a sturdy leaf structure and large saucer-like flowers is because it's going to be pollinated primarily by beetles. Beetles can get pretty messy when they eat and they'll take down pretty much anything in their way. So the tree needs to have uh, very strong, durable leaves in order to uh, withstand the little spike. Uh, the flowers have also evolved to be large and cup-like to serve as a sh uh, shelter of sorts for uh, these bigger insects, making it, of course, uh, much more attractive to beetles. Now, right around the corner, you can find these daisies. Daisies are, of course, pretty common here in uh, the state of New York, and you'll pretty much see them growing uh, as weeds along uh, roadsides. But there are actually a number of different uh, native daisy species uh, here in New York State. They're known as one of the most important plants for pollinators, since they provide food for not just bees, but also beetles, uh, ants, and moths. And in a world that's quickly paving over native insect habitats, pollinators need to acquire whatever food they can find. And daisies um, do provide that lifeline for them. Okay, and moving on now, and we continue along the slope of the Dean, where we come to this high point with uh, views of the east side of the park immediately below us. Uh, along the slope, carefully hidden behind all the tall grasses and wildflowers, uh, you'll find one of the few cacti here in Central Park. Uh, believe it or not, these are actually native to the east coast of the United States, so native to uh, New York State. So this is what's called the Eastern Prickly Pear and it thrives in very dry, rocky environments like large outcrops of Manhattan schist. Again, like with so many of the plants that we've seen so far, their most effective pollinators are going to be bees. And in order to ensure pollination, uh, these uh, particular types of cacti, they have, uh, they've grown flowers with parts that are able to uh, deposit their pollen when touched by, say, perhaps maybe a honeybee or a bumblebee or something like that. The flowers also grow directly on the cacti themselves, uh, as you folks can see. And they're usually a very distinctive uh, yellow orange color. So definitely check them out uh, right now um, since they are going to be uh, uh, you know, in full bloom over the next few weeks. All right, so just a few steps down, uh, you can see this scarlet bee bomb, which is actually just about to bloom with its bright showy flowers. Now, this is a perennial plant. It's also known as the red bergamot and it's part of the mint family. Um, a number of different animals actually help pollinate it, including hummer, uh, hummingbirds and butterflies. Now, one kind of bug that is especially attracted to the scarlet bee bomb um, is this little critter right here. This is called a fritillary butterfly. Because it's got such a bright reddish showy pattern, um, it's sometimes actually confused for the monarch butterfly. But unlike the monarch, um, the fritillary butterfly, uh, butterfly doesn't actually like milkweed as much. Uh, instead, it prefers um, other plants like the bee balm or perhaps maybe violets. All right. And uh, from here, we're going to continue making our way down the slope. Let's check out one last uh, native plant before we end off our walk. So right near the bottom of the slope, we come to uh, this plant called the Virginia spider wart. It's got this very lovely bluish purple flower that only lasts for a day. Afterwards, it actually uh, wilts and turns into a jelly-like consistency. Of course, our favorite pollinators, the bees, love the, uh, the spider work, and bumblebees especially have been known to be the most efficient at transferring pollen between these plants. Spider can be uh, seen from New England all the way down to the southeast, 
one reason why they've been planted here in this uh, native meadow in the park. All right, so as we end off our walk at the bottom of the Dean Slope, we get this uh, nice view of the tall grasses and other plants of the wild meadow landscape with the massive skyscrapers of Midtown Manhattan behind it. I think it's a view that best summarizes Central Park as a whole. While it was very much a uh, designed to be this naturalistic paradise, the city, of course, is never too far away anywhere you go. All right, everybody, that does it for uh, this week's walk through Central Park. Uh, don't forget to check out our upcoming Pride in Central Park tour uh, in celebration of Pride Month, where we'll examine the LGBT community's influence on the park landscape. We do have a few spots uh, available, so you can register online or at our website. Uh, Desiree will go ahead and put the uh, uh, link down in the chat. And of course, you can also connect with us on our social media channels. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, and Twitter, and you can use the handle at Central Park NYC. And of course, if you'd like to see this video again, just go to our YouTube channel. Um, again, uh, if you click, uh, if you uh, check the uh, chat section, you can find the link for that there. Um, we're going to keep the room open for any last final questions. Otherwise, from all of us here at the Central Park Conservancy, stay safe and be well. Have a good day, folks.